so it's like you know I kind of just I know it's a Star Wars podcast but I still can't help but feel like I want to go dun 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 totally wrong completely wrong completely wrong song same composer completely yeah. wrong song <laughs> anyway hello there General Kinobi. Only took you five episodes to get it right. I can learn. <laughs> I should hope so. Make me yeah. more aware that you're not a droid. Yeah. Well. <laughs> without me, uh, you'll never get from here to Batu. You messed it up. It's Blackspire. How dare you? Yeah. But I was leaning into not being a droid, and therefore I can't say the but you song. had to you but you messed it up i know you messed it up you got my name right you got the joke right but well, you what? messed up the quote i'm bad at this you are bad at this. there's a script right there and i was looking <laughs> you in the face hi everybody welcome to episode five of aggressive negotiations um we are talking today about as matt had uh, ruined the joke. We're talking about the planet Batu, um, and specifically Galaxy's Edge. So, I mean, he kind of just ruined the entire intro by jumping right into that line. Well, here, here, here I am. Good job. How the are you? Ruiner. You are. At least you're not the great interrupter. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, how are you today, Matt? I'm tired. It's Monday. Oh, that's probably a good reason for me to be tired. Up too late last night? Oh, well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's a matter of opinion. I mean, yeah, I was up too late last night. But I didn't have to get up as early as you, so I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. Have you... Ooh, there is a big storm blowing in. Yeah, no. Like, I can see out the window, there is just black all of a sudden, the sky. Yay! <laughs> you guys, if you, can hear click, if you can hear, like, clicking and buzzing, it's just because the window's open because it is so hot in here on a regular basis. Um, anyway, um, yeah, it's just, it's just been an interesting day. It was an interesting day yesterday. We got lots of t stuff to talk about. This one might be a little bit shorter because... Um, there wasn't a lot of news this week for us to yeah. go over, so, and um, as is evidenced by the title of today's episode, we're talking a lot more about um, Galaxy's Edge, which is the new, uh, what's it, is, it called? It is the, uh, the hot topic. It is the hot topic. Everything that's come out this in this past week since our last Monday has basically been about Galaxy's Edge, and we're going to talk about the planet Batu because... Um, I don't know anything about Batu. Well, the more I'm reading, the more I'm figuring we're going to find out really quickly in the new uh, movie. I think so. I um, I actually agree with that. Like That we're going to find a whole bunch of... They straight up say in a couple of places that shortly after the Battle of Kate, or Crate, Crate, I was about to ask who is Kate, and do I need to be jealous? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> the Battle of Crate, the Millennium Falcon, travels to Batu. Oh, so we'll probably, yeah, see a lot more about that. So It'll probably start on that planet. I'm kind of excited to see that. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't have anything going on this week. I... If you're here for my Twitter stream this morning, welcome. I had a terrible date yesterday, went on a big Twitter rant, um, and if you guys are here from that, thank you so much. If you are watching live, welcome to the stream. If you are watching, um, uh, if you are listening to this podcast as a podcast, or if you are watching it on YouTube, thank you so much for your support. We super appreciate it. You know what? I think we should probably just about get right into it since I've got nothing else interesting going on. Yeah. But hey, Matt, before we start, I have a joke for you. Okay. What's the internal temperature of a tauntaun? Mm, I don't know. Lukewarm. That makes sense. Yeah. You guys should see the look he's giving me. It is like 
just this absolute there is the light has gone out from his eyes if he was yaddle he would be boiling my blood using the force right now <laughs> look i love puns star wars puns all puns give me all your puns if you guys can think of any other star wars puns let me know because of reasons um <laughs> hit me up on twitter i'm at raggedy author hit me up on twitter if you guys can think of any more star wars puns and we will feature them in our opening going forward anyways let's just get right into it what happened this week um the first big thing the first big thing i have been going nuts over this one alphabet squadron i have talked about it twice it's a book it's coming out i think tomorrow i thought it was the tomorrow. 12th but apparently it's out tomorrow because i read a comic this week and saw the we saw it <laughs> i saw the, the advertiser thing or you know yeah. the advert um alphabet squadron got an excerpt on starwars.com just head over to starwars.com click on their news blog and it's like the second entry i read it and I am just like, yes, 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 give it to me. Put it in my face. Um, um, I am so stoked. I am so stoked. It's, it's, it's a rebel story, which is great. And I will get into why it's great afterwards. Um, um, the excerpt is an introduction to the characters and why they got the call sign alphabet squadron. It's super adorable. I saw the book drops in two weeks, but it drops uh, tomorrow. So I have got to catch up on all my reading. I still have a pile of books that I haven't got through yet. Yeah. Um, specifically to talk about on the show, and I'm just, like, busy. When have you got the time? And that's no time. I never have time. When have I ever had time to do anything? Yeah. Anyway, it's hard enough to finding time for, I don't know, food. I forgot to eat yesterday, speaking of food. Anyway, Alphabet Squadron, go check out the excerpt. Pick it up when it comes out tomorrow because it looks cute. These ragtag bunch of idiots. I love them all. It's The excerpt is like, it's not very long. It seems like maybe a half of chapter two or three. Um, and it's a really good introduction to all of the characters. I fell in love with them immediately. And based on all of the concept art, they're all hot. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you yeah, know, I'm super happy that it is a rebel um, book rather than something like, I don't like reading a lot of the books about the bad guys. I really genuinely don't. I don't think that humanizing a lot of these the, these allegories for space Nazis, because that is what the Empire 100% is. Allegor like... I don't love humanizing the bad guys as much as this franchise seems to love. And this ties in directly to the next thing I want to talk about. It is the um, TIE Fighter comic, TIE Fighters issue 2. We just read it. Yeah. The artwork is really, really great. The artwork is fantastic. In comparison to the last ones that I read, I, I, I love every panel of it it was fantastic and i forgot to write down who the art is by let me just google it real quick it is written by jody hauser who is really awesome let me just pull this up um number two it's a it's a mini series so i mean so it'll be five issues yeah five issues it's two of five we just read it um it's about a squadron called shadow wing I don't, I don't care. It's the opposite of Alphabet Squadron. I kind of don't care. It's written by Jody Hauser, who is a really good writer. I really enjoy a lot of what she does. Um, the artists are Joshua Kassara and I don't know how to pronounce that. Roge? Roger? Yep. Or is that a typo for George? I don't know. R-O-G-E, Antonia. It, eh. It, Maybe it it's was meant to say rogue, but spelled stupid. Don't say stupid. It's somebody's name. Sorry. What is wrong with you? Don't be that. Don't be that guy. I had that guy yesterday on my date. Sorry. Don't be yeah. that guy. 
it, I don't know how to pronounce that, that was name. was thoughtless of me. Yeah, it was super thoughtless of me. Get out. I can do this by myself. <laughs> Man, Goodbye, I'm gonna everyone. repro. I'm gonna reprogram you. I, I, I gotta reprogram this droid. It'll take anyway. five episodes, and I'll learn. Anyway, it is literally the opposite of Alphabet Squadron to me. It's it's humanizing these Imperial officers, these Tie Fighters. It's it's it's. I'm not into it i'm gonna keep it up i mean i'm i'm here reading it for this thing but i didn't i'm not enjoying it it's we're two issues in the art is gorgeous so i mean that's yeah that's a plus, that's a plus. um but taking specifically bad guy characters to me and humanizing them and giving them backstories and families and all this other stuff i really don't think in, especially in today's political climate. If this was the 70s and you were doing it, sure. Yeah. But, like, right now, considering the state of the fandom, the state of the people who, you know, call themselves fans of Star Wars and all of the backlash that the new movies have gotten and setting this, I recognize that there's only so many stories you can tell with Luke and Leia. Like, there are only so many stories you can tell. So you got to find a way to make more money and put out these new stories. But I don't think, personally that this was the correct thing to do. There was a there is a, a sequence of panels where two characters, they're a couple, they're on the same squadron, are talking and they're comparing themselves to the the rebels and how it was um or the resistance, whatever they're calling themselves, mm -hmm. as according like that is a direct quote from them from the book. But they are um I just they're they're trash talking the Senate. They're, it's like, oh, this is set up by a couple of Senates, and it's like this was set up by a couple of senators and this and that, and they think they're doing the right thing, but we're fighting for the Empire and we are fighting for the the people and the planets and they're they're just glorifying this fascist space regime and that is 100 percent what the empire is i don't I, I will happily argue this forever and i just don't think it's the correct thing to do and it's a little bit frustrating coming from a marvel and b jody hauser to see this kind of content being put out there yeah it's as if it's being written with a uh, well ignoring the context of the entire universe where these characters don't want to try and find out the actual truth of the fact that most of their orders are on the whim of a sith lord bent on uh, essentially the destruction of everything in the the full control of the universe like all they have to do is try and i don't know educate themselves on well their but that's line of but, okay but wait but that's the thing people in that are not going to and i mean it's kind of doing you know how like in world war ii there were all those pictures of the german soldiers and the nazis especially at concentration camps, and I'm sorry that this is getting really heavy, but there were all these pictures of them coming out, like, we see this now, of them, like, having fun, because it's just a day in the life for them. It's just a day of work for them. They don't know, they don't look beyond what they're doing. So, to kind of draw that parallel to this TIE Fighter Squadron where they're still living their lives, and they're still just, they believe in what they're doing, and, I mean, it could always turn around, I don't know, I don't know where the story is going, but I am just, it makes me feel yucky. Maybe there's a turnaround in the next three issues. Like. Maybe. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. It really doesn't seem like it. And that line specifically kind of made me put the book down and go, I don't want to read this anymore. And I just, yeah. I feel like it's incredibly, it's incredibly frustrating to see it coming from out of Marvel and to, and from Jody Hauser, who I actually, like, I really respect her and I know I'm being a little bit... I sound like I'm being a little bit harsh with this criticism, but eh, eh, yeah, eh. I, I, 
I don't know, maybe it'll turn around in the next little while. And that one was the only one I read. I know there was um, Darth Vader Dark Visions or something, or Darth Vader Visions came out this week too. Hmm. Another mini. I haven't been reading that one, so I'm going to try and catch up on it for next week. I can totally hear it. Sorry about the cops in the background. They're mad at me for shit-talking Star Wars. <laughs> They're coming to get me, Barbara. Anyway... The other thing that I noticed, the other piece of news that is not Galaxy's Edge this week, unless you have anything else to say about the comic? No. Okay. The next thing that I noticed this week um, was Skellig Michael, the island where Luke had hid himself away and where the Puffins, now po Porgs, I can't read, I was going to say Pogs, Porgs live. So it's Skellig Michael off the coast of uh, Finland? Uh, Iceland? No, I think it's actually closer to uh, Ireland. Is it? I can't remember. Skellig Michael. It's the island that where the, the puffins are and where Luke's um, had hidden himself away. Anyways, it has seen a surge in visitors due to the Star Wars effect. They s were expecting... Since the movie came out, they um, had seen a massive increase from... 10,000 or 12,000 visitors to 16,000 visitors, and they are expecting to see that doubled. So that's 30,000 visitors they're expecting to see by next by the end of this year. Um, it's already a tourist destination. Yeah, it's in Ireland. Ireland? Okay. It's, it's already a tourist destination for outdoorsy types. Um... Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's the puffins. It's, it's, um, very, it's a very beautiful place. We saw it. There's, there's pathways and stuff in there and it takes about 90 minutes to get there by boat. And they've seen this massive spike in, in, in visitors. And, um, but now there's so many people going to visit that the park maintenance is above expectations and requires more and more and more. Like, they maintain the pathways, they maintain um, the grounds to make it so that it's less dangerous for people, because, I mean, you fall off that path and you're screwed. Yeah. Um, they, the park is closing in September and is expected to remain closed until 2020. And when you, like, that's a Star Wars effect. I mean, it's great, yeah. but it's also, like, Jesus. Like, what do you, what do you think about that, Matt? Um... Well, with the amount of tourism happening there, that means there's going to be a bunch of money available to properly maintain the island and to make it ready for more people later. So I'm thinking they're probably going to have someone good at their job on in, in charge of... Uh, revamping it for 2020 well I, it's a national park is it not like it's a protected space yeah so i don't think they can do too too much to revamp well like just i like they're not gonna revamp it but like there's they're probably gonna put better railings mm. next to the the pathways which go a long way to helping people stay on pathways and not destroy the rest of the island and the, the natural habitat of these uh, puffins. I'm, it, it concerns me just the amount of people going up, like, for the conservation efforts, because puffins are already endangered. Yeah. I mean, nowhere near as bad as, like, Kakapo in New Zealand, but still, those are those little green flightless parrots. Yeah. And, and the conservation efforts have been... I follow a lot of conservation efforts, guys, but yeah, so, like, I know you don't love the porgs. <laughs> like... Yeah, no, they, they they were thrown at my face, and it's that that just soured it for me. That's fair. That's fair. But yeah, so um, the 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 um, the park is closing in September for maintenance, basically, to try and protect the, not only the natural habitats but to make it safer for people to show up. And that is the Star Wars effect. I am perfectly fine with that. Yeah, they do that with a lot of uh, places. Like they completely closed off the. Uh, the Komodo Islands, because uh, tourism was getting a little bit much, and they needed to take and let things settle. And also, people were stealing Komodo dragons, which is not a good idea. 
Can you steal me? Oh, come on, I'm drinking. Can you steal me a puffin? Can we go to Skelly Michael? I'm reasonably certain someone be, would be very upset if I did. If you stole me a puffin? Yeah. All right. And they ma- they might mate for life. I don't know a lot about puffins, but some birds do mate for life, and I would feel horrible. I'm pretty if, sure they do. Yeah. You see? Okay, steal me w- two then. Well, I'd have to find the couple. Find me a find me a baby then. Let's just go. And steal a baby. <laughs> Now I'm sounding even worse. <laughs> wow. I mean, at least you're not eating them like Chewbacca was gonna. I guess. Well, he <laughs> did. He did kill and cook it, and then got cold feet afterwards. I'm surprised he wasn't like just actually feeding pieces of it to the other porgs. Like that would have been hilarious. I mean, we all feed. We all feed the seagulls like cold chicken when we go on on or or let lunch oh, meats when we seagulls go seagulls will eat anything when we go on picnics they will like... <laughs> straight up steal your food regardless of what it is that roasted pork did look delicious yeah i i honestly didn't think it would be a bird no, like when i looked at them in the first place speaking of porks if i was gonna eat pork i kind of just assumed they would be like red meat not bird i guess they just looked at them well like the the the, <laughs> the people making it are, are looking at puffins all day they can't help but think this is gonna be a bird <laughs> so i'm, I'm thinking guess. that's where it came from i guess so i mean so we're 20 minutes in are you ready to take an advertising break for just two seconds here while i let's do it my, all right so we're gonna take a minute let's let me um let me pitch you on some stuff, guys. What history has gone unnoticed? What changes have been made to the comics industry because of political interference? What seedy underbelly lurks forgotten to seduce and entice those who are less wary? Friday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, join your hosts, myself and Mary, as we uncover the hidden truths that the comics industry hopes you have forgotten. Seduction of the Innocents, a politics in comics podcast, every Friday live here on Twitch, hosted by On Comics Ground. And did you know that... You can support your favorite writers and shows directly. You can by pledging to the On Comics Ground Patreon. Your dollars go directly to running the website and paying contributors. In return, you'll get early access to op-eds and featured content before the website, ad-free podcasts, access to a fan discord, and help unlock merchandise for your favorite podcasts and series. Head over to patreon.com slash oncomicsground and donate today. You can also, there's a link in the bottom underneath, if you're watching on Twitch, there is a link to... Drop us a couple of tips if you want to help support us directly. Um, all right, let's get on. Let's get on with this. Yep. Let's get on with this. Um, Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy's Edge. Holy crow! <laughs> There's. <coughs> it, it, it's kind of a dichotomy of there's so much to say about galaxy's edge but also there's not a lot Mm. to find there's not a lot because they're kind of keeping it locked down yeah as much as they can because they want they don't want spoilers and i'll explain that in a second but like everything we're talking about this week is galaxy's edge there's nothing else going on right now my birthday was on thursday the 30th and then as the theme park opened as it rolled over to may 31st we watched the gala we've seen a whole bunch of photos and videos coming out from the opening gala and it was amazing there were live streams and just the amount of stars that were there like it was a star studded it wasn't even a red carpet event there wasn't anything like it didn't look like that people were just there because they had the tickets to go to this thing they had the reservations and like celebrities were showing up brie larson is the one who is most notable that i saw the most of because people were going gaga over this that she was just there enjoying the thing but there were like fireworks there were everything was all lit up it looked beautiful and fun and fantastic and um yeah i'm really envious that we we haven't had a chance to go yet we don't have them we don't we don't have the money to go yet the several thousands of dollars (laughs) <laughs> plus plus the fact that the ticket sold out in two hours when they released so yep maybe by next year once it kind of maybe. settles into a routine but anyway mark hamill george lucas harrison ford ahmed best ryan johnson was there um i forget his name but he played solo 
Han Solo, like baby Han Solo in the movie, uh, was there. Childish Gambino. No, Han Solo, not oh, Lando. And that's Donald Glover. Guess what? I'm dyslexic, and that's the <laughs> excuse I am making. Everybody was there. Like, um, on my yeah. best. Ryan Johnson only was allowed to, po- I think he went early, and all he was allowed to post was his little uh, wristband, like his access wristband. So Yeah. Um. Yeah, but it it was so much. Um. So few pictures aren't allowed right now, but everything looks so amazing and so richly detailed that it's hard to describe. To me, it looks like a lot of sensory overload. Yeah. <laughs> like blink and you'll miss these things, and I honestly don't think I could do the whole park in a day. I definitely couldn't. Like there's just so much. I would want to stop and touch everything and talk to everybody and. I would have to be there for at least five days. You think five? Five days. Minimum. Fair. But speaking of all the stars and Harrison Ford. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about Harrison Ford for like a minute here. Um, This is my favorite bit to come out of anything. Yeah. Speaking of Harrison Ford, when they started up the Millennium Falcon for the first time, because that we all know that is the big attraction was the ride, Smuggler's Run or whatever they called it, where you get to go into the Millennium Falcon, there was a Disney actor playing Chewbacca, and he was having, they, sorry, they were having, I don't know if it was a guy or a girl playing Chewbacca, but Chewbacca was having trouble and couldn't start the Falcon. I don't know if this was staged or if it was actually something just not working. I think it may have been staged. But as, as Chewbacca couldn't start the Millennium Falcon, Harrison Ford came out to do the honor. So he hit it. So he had to... Like he, an old TV. Did he really? Yeah. I didn't see I'm, the video I'm all the way. I'm pretty sure... And I'm, I'm sorry, but it's been a while since I've watched the old movies, but I'm pretty sure it was a recreation of a scene where he, Millennium he Falcon it, wasn't. Yeah. And, he, and he smacks the underside and it starts up. And the, the part that got me about it is that he dedicated it to Peter Mayhew's memory. Yeah. And as we all know, Peter Mayhew just died a couple of weeks ago and he he said uh, he, he he was quoted as saying Peter this one's for you or something along those lines yeah. as he got it to start and uh, I'm getting all emotional yeah it was really cute it was really funny but um additionally with Harrison Ford I adore him he's a wonderful I love, man I love the guy um he gave the theme park a shining endorsement According to Variety, he called it incredible. And coming from Harrison Ford, considering how he feels about this trilogy and how it kind of, or like this franchise rather, yeah, like, and how it kind of affected his, he doesn't seem like a huge fan of Star Wars. He, like, he kind of wanted to get killed off. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was kind of his deal. Um, he called it fantastic, no, incredible, according to Variety. Um, and he also remarked um, on the on the replica of the Millennium Falcon. And he what he said was, and I quote, I think it works better than the one we used to use for the movies. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think that's fantastic. That's hilarious. And seeing as, like, his original background was set creation. Yeah, he was building the sets before he got to... So, <laughs> got obviously, to act, so. he would know what's, what's, what's well built and what isn't. I just, I, I'm sorry, I just thought that was hilarious. It just cracked me up when I read it. So since we are talking about Galaxy's Edge, let's actually talk about the theme park, about yeah. what we know in the theme park. So apparently there is a story that repeats daily. There are daily events, there is a story, and it is 100% canon to the Star Wars universe. I found the article on Polygon, um, and it was an interview with Matt Martin, who is the one of the creative executives for Lucasfilm Story Group, and he was the representative talking actually to Polygon, where I pulled this from. So, Matt Martin says, and this is a direct quote, the events at Galaxy's Edge are meant to be canonical. I wouldn't say that you as an individual dressed in Earth clothes are now part of actual canon, but the storytelling is meant to be really part of Star Wars, down to its place on the timeline. I can't get into it, but I know the specific day that the events of this park take place. 
I love that. Yeah. I love that. The fact that this is an additional, like, it is canon. It happened in Star Wars. There are these events that you can experience. I love it. He goes on. There's more to this, which just further, you know, um, just enhances the immersion and it enhances the experience of it. He goes on to say that the cast members... Uh, this is a quote. The cast members went through some really cool immersive training to learn their parts. They actually got to create their characters. So if you want to know more about the experience of what it would be like to live as a villager in this land, you can talk to one of them because they live here. That is their story. They can tell you all about the things that are outside of Blackspire Outpost, all of the day-to-day -day life. That's super awesome. I, I'm super envious of the people who got to do this and who are now cast members and doing this. the fact this. that, like, so much has been made about this this planet, and I'm later going to be talking about it, and I have so little to say because they're keeping it under wraps just so that people showing up get this information firsthand. Right there. And Oh, yeah, no, it's there is not a lot to say, and that's why we're taking our sweet time talking about all this other stuff. Yeah. Because this podcast is going to be like, well, we're at 30 minutes. Like, I don't see us going longer than 45, maybe 50. I don't see us hitting another half hour on stuff because I'm almost out of stuff to talk about. Um, But, yeah, like, to have that experience, to actually be... I'm, I think I'm more envious of the people actually working there than yeah. the people going Kind of. Because how fun as a fan to get to work there and create a character and work with this and make this a canonical experience. How fantastic would that be, you guys? Like, ugh. Yeah. No, I'm super into that idea. Like, the fact that we, we both like role-playing games and having the ability to create different kinds of relationships with other characters and play those out like i just don't like that other guy who runs that other shop and and right. and and having a really good natured because like none of them want to be negative obviously but like having a good natured like competition between like two shops that are possibly across from each other and having the freedom to do that is I, I love the idea of it. It's fantastic. Uh, uh, yeah, no. And, and then in that Polygon article, they, I didn't write it down because I was like, eh, it's, eh. But what they were saying is that when somebody leaves, that character is gone. Yeah. Like, if, 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 this, char if this person quits, they are, that character is no longer there. They, there will be a replacement. Like, they don't necessarily hand it, oh, hand it over because it is their yeah their character um so i just thought that was kind of cool but what you were saying there is more there is more there is so much to talk about and we haven't even been there and this is just what the information we could find galaxy's edge has events built right into the theme park the first of which one involves an app and some like speaker boxes and this just ties into even more of that interactive canonical stuff so you get this app, it's like the Disney Parks Play app or something like that. You go to the Galaxy's Edge section, and you get to use this app to activate these boxes and build a more interactive experience. You can either hack, like, quote, hack these boxes for the Rebels by completing puzzles and, um, like, it's just simple puzzles, and I'm not sure what it's doing. Or you can reactivate them for the First Order. And there are places where you can, so, like, that one is a game in and of itself, so you can either hack, you can, you can choose your side and either hack or restore them for the First Order. Um, there are places where you can scan and translate alien languages. This is the thing that got me. A lot, there are a lot of these things out there. You'll hear the language spoken or you'll see it on a wall, like written in the alien languages. Not just the Star Wars basic one, like that, the one that looks almost like Klingon. Yeah. Not just that one, but you'll also see like alien languages. Um, and so then you get to use the app to translate the things that are either being spoken or that you're seeing on the walls, you can scan them, they translate them for you. And then the hacked, at the, at the end of the day, so there's, like I said, there's a story going on through the entire day, and as time runs down for the day, 
the hacked boxes or the reactivated ones, depending on what you're doing, do declare like a winner. And I'm like just air quoting here. It's like a winner for whichever side, either the rebels or the first order. <coughs> it apparently doesn't do much of anything because it's like a Groundhog Day effect where it's the same story over and over and over. Yeah. And we're going to see more tie-ins to this day specifically, mm -hmm. uh, which I'll get into in a second. Um, but... Yeah, so there's a winner you can you can uh, um, affect either the rebel side or the first order side with this with this app, and there's also you can take a job, and you can either work for the rebels or the first order or the gangsters who work and live on Batu in the outpost, and it's just like you take a job and like you do a thing on the app, like you I don't know it didn't really go into detail like you can scan a thing or you like do a puzzle or whatever and you take a job. Um, so there's no real prizes involved with its stuff, but it affects your digital ranking online in the app. So woohoo, leaderboards, I guess. Yeah, it's something to work towards and have fun at. Yeah, I think so. I think it just, it gives you, like I said, I would need more than a day. Yeah. Because unless I'm, you're, st like, who would want to have your, your phone out while you're, like, trying to look at all this stuff? Unless, like, the scanning part is cool. But, yeah. like, having your phone out and trying to do the thing, I feel like it takes... As much as it adds, it takes away a certain level of the experience. Yeah. In some ways. Because, like, when you think of going to a comic expo, even, there's so much that you can't... A day is just not enough. You need to have at least at yeah. least two to get everything done. Um, but my favorite part of what it sounds like is there's... A, there's on the app, you can eavesdrop on broadcasts from the Rebels in the First Order. So you can like actually hear these, these pre-recorded broadcasts like this chatter from spaceships and whatever between the first from between the first order or between the rebel alliance or the yeah the rebels they're still called the rebels right sure <laughs> so yeah and it just it sounds crazy overwhelming but so in it's like so immersive if that's the experience you're looking for like i can see a lot of people just going to shop and just going to experience yeah. the thing. But having all of these layers and, and being able to see, like, know that there are these layers yeah. to it, I guess kind of help would help Where you can plan. basically go through the same park in several different ways and enjoy it completely differently every experience. Well, it's also like, designed so that you get more of the story and more of the thing. There's, like, some maps and you eventually get, if you go enough around enough times, you'll get a schematic that you can, like, download and... Yeah, print out like, or something like that but it's designed to make sure that you walk around you loop around the park a couple of times which i think is really great because that's going to mitigate a lot of lines I and mean, you'll never miss anything because people will be hovering you'll be like oh okay that's a thing that i can scan and this sounds so amazing like like i guess they're called the resistance now not the rebels so much i guess with the first order so thank you chat um but yeah, no, this sounds, there's so much stuff going on that I just, I am overwhelmed just talking about it. And I really, honest to God, wish I could go. And then I mentioned it last week. This is the last little bit of um, stuff that's come out. And tying all of it together, I, I think I mentioned it last week or the week before, but Delilah S. Dawson is writing the official Black Spire novel. It's 100% canon and ties directly into the events at the theme park. But the events of the novel are the direct lead into the aforementioned daily events that happen within Galaxy's Edge. So this, so reading this, excuse me, book is going to give you the story for what you're about to experience at the park. It takes place like the couple of days right before the park. And the park, we're not 100% sure about where it takes place in the timeline, but that is that. And I'm super excited because I love Delilah S. Dawson. I love her writing. Um, I mentioned her upcoming return to the comics with um, issue 25 of Star Wars Adventures. It's a Leia and Haldo story. So getting, like, I knew she was doing the, the tie, like, I knew she was doing the novel. I didn't realize it was the official tie-in to, like, the whole park. Yeah. Um, and I think that one, we, Black, it's called Black Spire, and it drops on August 27th. What do you think about all this? I've kind of just been talking for 10 minutes. Oh, so what yeah. do you have to say about all of this? Like, it's so much. Well, like, everything that you're saying, I've got more that's just along the same lines from a different angle that, like, Disney is tying so much into this. Like, uh, and, and the, the amount of thought work uh, that 
obviously went into uh, the theme park and the movies all at the same time in order to make this happen uh, is pretty incredible. Like, just the, the sheer amount of people, like, moving parts that could have gone wrong. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh... It's mind-boggling. It's, yeah, it is. And it's really impressive, the amount of stuff that they've got out. Because, like, the fact that they were planning this as a, canon- a canonical experience means that this next movie was planned out, at least in a couple of points well in advance oh no this movie has been planned out since jj abrams came on uh ryan johnson taking over the middle didn't matter the plot is still completely intact aside from possibly the princess leia stuff because but I'm, Carrie Fisher i'm thinking they away. had it kind of even more de- like minorly but still set in stone development before jj abrams got his hands on filling it out oh they absolutely would have had to yeah, just... There's too many moving parts and too many things that could have gone wrong for anything. Like, it had to have been... Yeah. I mean, this park was in development for, what, six years? Five years? Something like that? Something like that, yeah. So, you know, it's just the amount of... The amount of prep work that has gone into this and the amount of... Everything is just... Ugh. Ugh, I'm so excited. So excited. We all need to go. Everybody, let's get on a plane. Let's go. <laughs> let's I don't go. have any money. Somebody else pay for it. Send us some money. <laughs> Anyway, guys, let's take a real quick break. Go get your drink, Matt. Let's uh, let's take an ad break real quick. Tonight's stream is sponsored by Twitch streamer Star Pop. Chill games, insomnia streams, and an abundance of puns. Basically, this this exact podcast. Star Pop is back and playing Magic the Gathering Arena and all of your favorite DS, N64, and GameCube games almost every night. Twitch.tv slash Star Pop. Cool. We're back. Matt, have you had enough to drink? <laughs> it is so hot in here, you guys. It's It's bad. Let's get into, hey, look, 42 minutes. <laughs> 42 minutes. We might actually hit an hour. <laughs> Holy Toledos. Oh, my goodness. I'm not going to talk for the next 10 minutes because Matt has a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. We are talking about Batu and Black Spire Outpost. Yeah, uh, I was looking into what will likely be seen in the movies and stuff and what the actual canon of the, the description of Batu, Black Spire, and the whole works. Um, so it's going to be pretty brief because there's like three paragraphs worth of information. Um, on top of that, I write very big, so. <laughs> I, I just, I feel like it was kind of a throwaway planet at, at the beginning. Like it was just kind of mentioned. It was mentioned in Solo. Yeah. Which was the joke Matt was supposed to make at the beginning and then he screwed it up. Um, about us not being able to get the Black Spire outpost. Yeah. Um, that was in Solo. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's not a lot to talk about. We're covering it today because this is a planet where the theme park is, and so we felt like we should talk about this planet since that's what we rolled yeah. on the dice roll last week. So, Matt, oh, yeah. uh, I'm gonna shut up for like I'm interrupting. I'm still Batu. <laughs> yeah, located remotely in the outer rim along uh, forgotten Oops. sublight trade routes. And uh, since uh, the entire galaxy went into uh, faster-than-light trade routes, it's basically been a forgotten planet because it's no longer really needed. But it's right on the very edge of the Outer Rim, right? Right on the very edge of the Outer Rim. And it was also uh, the last stopping point uh, for uh, anyone wanting to go into... uh, uh, wild space, which I don't know why you'd want to go into wild space. It's really dark out there. <laughs> um, as far as I can guess, it's a multi sun system, and Batu has multiple moons as well. Uh, that's. Oh, crumb. I didn't write down the actual uh, Batuan sayings, but I'm pretty sure during the day when they're saying, like, hello to each other, it's, uh, suns rising. Very specifically plural suns, and, uh, at night it's, uh, moons rising. Possibly. No, it was something, it was was something different. Chances are, if you go to Galaxy's Edge, everyone's gonna be saying it. And that's probably where they're enforcing that kind of 
I'll look it up. Keep talking. All right. Uh, they're they're trying to be really clever with the actual planet itself, where where it's temperate climate, forests and such, a lot like um, the surrounding area of the theme park. And uh, I, I I really like how. Uh, the one big feature of it is it's kind of covered in old crumbling petrified trees that are like thousands of feet tall which is where black spire gets its name the trees are, are black spires at this point i found it it's okay. bright suns for good morning, okay. rising moons for good evening, and then there's a whole bunch of other cool stuff that they like randomly say. Like water fountain is a hydrator, the refresher is the bathroom, on planet is in the in the park. Um, ignite the spark is the greeting for resistance. Light the fire is a resistance callback to ignite the spark. Only the ancients know is I don't know. Till the spire is farewell. Good journey is an informal goodbye, and may the spires keep you is a more formal goodbye. I think that's really awesome. Yeah. They, they really built, they really built this like crazy. I love it. And the fact there's that so there's, much in there. there's like a culture there now. Yeah, they've put an actual culture in there. And like these characters, like I was saying, these, these people have built their characters and they've built all of this backstory. Like the, like the, I love it. It's so cool. Also, I forgot to mention when we were talking about the, can, like the canonical stuff of it and how yeah. it, the bathrooms are canon. Nice. The bathrooms are built like they're modern bathrooms, but like the outsides and everything, all the washrooms and everything are canonical to. I I I I haven't seen pictures of the interior, but I really hope they're like weird, like I'm those weird European really... style like toilets that you're like, am I supposed to pee in this or wash my hands in this? I'm not hundred percent. Like the egg shaped ones that you don't. Yep. Know. <laughs> Who knows. <laughs> But yeah, the washrooms are canonical. That is how much detail they've put into this. Yeah. All right. I'm going to shut up. Keep going, Matt. Uh, the <laughs> largest settlement, and not the only one, is Black Spire, the theme park. <laughs> obviously named for the these giant petrified trees. But there's also uh, some ancient ruins uh, located near some uh, river valleys full of, again, more of these jagged rocks that were once uh, ancient giant forests and the only things that uh, have that information is a little bit of concept art for yet again another tie-in book and we'll likely see some of it in the new movie where uh, BB-8 is uh, looks like he's running with a couple of uh, pilots that are scrambling uh, between these uh these spires and, and there's some cool looking ancient runes uh, in the background so ruins ruins as in like okay old buildings you tend to slur that word and i'm never sure if you're talking about runes like the writing system or ruins like broken okay, yeah. crumbling ancient structures so ancient ruins not ancient just not writing ruins okay yeah <laughs> All right. um, I'm like, I'm ooh. totally derailing him. Yeah. Uh, the only other places that I could find where Batu was maybe even depicted a little bit, and I'm not sure how much uh, they described it, but um, Anakin in uh, the Thrawn book, uh, Alliances. I haven't uh, read that one. Yeah, it's fairly new, I think. Mm -hmm. Couple, um, a year old, maybe? Padme goes missing, Anakin travels to Batu, and he meets Thrawn there. Huh. They team up and eventually find Padme. Hmm. That's the basic notes of it. Uh, and I'm not sure how much detail they go into. In the book. In the book. Or Again, whether they immediately leave the planet. So many moving parts. So many moving parts. That the... Man, the project manager for this must have been, like... Oh, boy. The most detail-oriented supercomputer. 
<laughs> this has been all put together by a droid, 100%, guys. Definitely. <laughs> Wasn't there something else? You were telling me last night when we were talking about this, um, something about Star Wars Rebels? Um, or was that specifically the the Outpost was mentioned in Rebels? Which is a show that we haven't watched because we don't have yeah. access to it in Canada because we don't have we're cable. Like, uh, and it's not on Netflix. I wish it was on Netflix. I do too because it looks really cute. Yeah. <laughs> we're um, watching it when we went out to dinner. No, I'm pretty sure I misread something and it's not in Rebels. But oh. I could be wrong just because even in like in, in all of this it's vague because they're, li they're they're trying to be as vague about it as possible until the rest of the source material comes out like these these new books and then we're 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 definitely getting a bunch from the new movie because the millennium falcon goes there hmm. and that's a big part of the movies the millennium falcon is basically like you follow it through all the movies essentially huh. so exciting all right what else do you got for me uh, that's about it oh that's it that's it you have nothing about black spire like specifically no uh, or is that like that's literally it <laughs> yeah like uh it, l337 uh mentions to lando uh, that without her he would never get from here to black spire that in is the, solo which is that is in solo that is the quote i didn't quote <laughs> um yeah no the, the rest of it is just it's mentioned a few places as teaser for everything we are looking forward to wow that is a lot of moving parts that's wow and a lot of keeping it hush hush like yeah Think of all those NDAs you would have had to sign on. Imagine oh if gosh. Tom Holland was on this cast. <laughs> We'd get so much more info. Uh, well done. Well Thanks. done. Well met. Good job. Well, I think that's everything for us tonight. Yeah. Hey, look, Matt. 52 minutes. We almost did an hour. High five. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't spike the audio with that high five. Yeah, because we missed. <laughs> I was calling in a win. I mean, okay, fair enough. But I think, guys, thank you so much. All of you lovely people, droids, aliens, whoever you are, thank you so much for joining us again tonight. Um, Matt, do you have anything you want to add? Any closing statements you want to make before we get the heck out of here and put the air conditioning back on? Uh, I want... I want to... I want to go to Galaxy's Edge. I, it's so bad. <laughs> I know, right? They have air conditioning there, too. It's mostly outside. In California. Yeah, but, like, the Disney hotels are really nice. <laughs> so we all want to go to Galaxy's Edge. That is basically yeah. our closing statements. Well, uh, mine is, guys, don't forget to grab your comics, pick up your pull lists, um, support these writers, Let's and, like, just be a general force for good up here in the Star Wars in the Star Wars fandom. Thank you so much for joining us. Join us next Monday for some chatter about whatever news comes up. And according to our dice roll, I... Where's our dice? We usually do a dice roll at the end of this. You know what? Never mind. I have no idea where my dice went. I have one die specifically for this. Whatever. Usually we do a dice roll. I think next week it's another character... Whatever, we'll probably do characters because they're the easiest to talk about. But we'll figure it out. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Hit us up on Twitter at OnComicsGround and let us know if there's something you want us to cover specifically. You can follow me at Raggedy Author. You can follow Matt at The S Dragon. He's also here on, on Twitch. Um, you know, if, if you guys don't give us any info or anything to talk about, I might just make Matt talk about the Moncala tomorrow, <laughs> next week. Moncala? Yeah. They do make a good spaceship. Maybe we'll talk about ships, but we'll figure it out. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, and Matt, thank you for joining me. Thank you guys for all your support. <laughs> I make the joke about the Mon Cala and everybody's like, yeah, do it. Anyways, guys, may the force be with you. We will see you next week. Have a great night. See ya.
Ah, fucking song. Still the wrong song. <laughs>